Welcome to the latest episode of the miniature painting series. Today, we'll learn how to paint the Tomb Giant set from the Dark Souls board game. This one took a while because I wanted to do a color guide compilation, like the complete base set, which I linked in the description, so it's easy to find everything in one place. For this big project, I'm listing all the colors I've used here, then I'll go mini by mini later on. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comment sections, and if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for more board game content and painting guides. The first step, as usual, is priming the miniature. And as you may already know, we have a full guide on how to prepare the miniatures for painting, so don't forget to check this out before starting. To avoid repeating myself, for all the minis, I finished their base with Abaddon Black, but you can do it any way you like. We'll start the guide with the characters. For the cleric, I started by mixing three colors to make up this skin tone. Kislev Flesh, Ish Body Bone, and just a bit of Wild Rider Red. For the eyes, I started with Ceramite White and added Abaddon Black after it dried. The tunic of the cleric was painted with a mix of Macridge Blue and Ceramite White. I used a mix of Zendry Dust and Catacomb Flash to paint the turtle shell on her back. I applied a few coats of Administratum Grey on the pets. I used Lead Voucher for the external parts of the shield and mace. I mixed the Flash Glitz Yellow and Everland Sunset to make the blonde tone of the hair. Then. I decided to go darker for the boots using Mechanicus Standard Grey. For the iconic shield, I mixed Thousand Suns Blue with Ceramite White and painted the front and back. I covered the diamond shapes with Ceramite White to fix some of the flaws. Then I applied Drakenhof Nightshade on the shield and tunic. I used Seraphine Sepia for the back cloth and then Nuo Oil for the pants, boots and mace. For the teeth, I mix Hinox Hide with Morphing Brown to have a skin tone lighter than the Sorcerer. Then I use Ceramite White for the base of the eyes and Abaddon Black for the pupils. I was in doubt for the robe, but I ended up choosing Abaddon Black since the black leather armor is the starting equipment for the teeth. This is where they go a bit off script and add a chainmail to the mix, which I painted with Lead Boucher. Now for the scarf, I use Zendry Dust. For the next step, I use Catacomb Flash for the belt and boots. I also painted a small case on the back. I came back with Zendry Dust to paint the knee pads. I also waited for it to dry and dry brush Gold Fag Brown on the poncho, knee pads and boots. After everything dried, I dry brushed Mechanical Standard Grey over the Abaddon Black robes to highlight the folds of the fabric. Back to the weapons, I used the same lead voucher for the base of the shield and the sword. Then I applied new oil over everything except the face. I made a line of iron breaker on the sword to make a sharpened blade effect. For the shield, I dry brushed Necron compound to highlight the edges. For the pyromancer, we will paint the base of the skin with Kislev flesh. For the next step, I use Zendry dust for the pants and I mix some of it with Mornfang brow for the boots, bracers, belt and pouches. For the eyes, I use Ceramite white for the base and Abaddon black for the pupils. I mix Wild Rider Red with Mornfang Brown to make a ginger tone for the hair and I water it down a bit and use some of it for the lips. For the base of the robe, I use Administratum Grey. The cape is a bit darker, so I mix Mechanical Standard Grey with Abaddon Black to reach this tone. I also use some pure Mechanical Standard Grey to reinforce the folds of the cape. The old copper metal parts of the robe was done with Nihilac Oxide. For the wooden part of the shield, I painted the base with Hinox Hide and dry brush a bit of Gogfag Brown for some texture. The metal sides of the shield and the axe was painted with Lead Belcher. I mixed Thousand Suns Blue with Ceramite White to paint the pelt. I also used Hinox Hide to paint the handle of the axe and the Pyromancer Crown. After it dried, I dry brushed Ceramite White over the fur to bring some contrast. I shaded the fur coat with Drakenhof Nightshade, taking care not to go over the other parts of the model. Then I used Seraphine Sepia to shade the brown parts and the boots. I shaded the skin too, but I have some regrets since the white of the eye disappeared a bit, so I'd avoid doing that. I apply no oil over the grey robes, the cape and the metal plates. I also use some iron breaker to highlight some parts of the metal plates of the center of the chest and the belt. Moving on to the enemies. For the skeletons, I'll do all at once to be faster. First, I must say that I used the black primer, but I kind of regret because it was the only one that I had at the time. If I had to do it again, I'll do it in white, so it takes less time to paint it. 
I painted the base of all the skeletons with Ush body bone. Then I painted all the wooden parts with Mornfang brown. That means the bows, the handle of the sword and the shield. Then I painted all the metal parts with lead belcher. I shaded all the wooden parts and the bone parts with seraphine sepia. And I did an extra layer of the base with Abaddon black. For the necromancer, I also did the base in black, but I would have changed for white. The eyes I did with ceramite white and Abaddon black. Then I painted the base of the skin with Bugman's glow. I started layering the skin with Kislev flesh, and then I shaded with Reichland flesh shade. And because it turned out a little bit dark, I dry brushed Elder flesh on it. Then I painted the robes with Zentry dust. The head that he carries, I used Yush body bone. Then I heavily shaded the robes and the skull with Seraphim set. For the skull's hair, I painted the base with Mechanical Standard Grey. Then I dry brushed with long beard grey, and finally I shaded with new oil. Now for the mini boss. I did the primary with black and it was okay for this mini. Then I painted everything with lead voucher. After it dried, I shaded with a heavy coat of new oil. Then I highlighted the edges with Necron compound and finalized the base with Abaddon black. And now for the final boss. I would also recommend doing the base with the white primer because of the school parts, but if you do, you have to paint the cape with Abaddon black. I use Yush body bone for the school parts, but you're gonna see that I use way more layers to cover all the base. I'll speed it up because that's a lot of bones in this boss. Next, I'll use Mechanicus Standard Grey to do some effects on the cape. Trying out my new wet palette! I basically just want to make a gradient from the bottom to the top. Actually, the middle of the cape, so it has some uh, effects. And I might not be using the best brush for that, I'll change later on. But basically just this half that I want to paint. After it dried, I'll use Dawnstone to dry brush the highlights, the folds of the fabric. Then I'll use Seraphine Sepia to shade all the bones and skulls of this monster. After the shade dried, I will highlight some parts of the bones with Wraith Bone. I'll use Mechanical Standard Grace for some of the details of the weapon. Because the weapon is not full bones, 
I'll water down this color and add on top of some parts of the bone. Then I'll use new oil to shade that part that I just painted. And this is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this big tutorial for the Tomb of Giants and I hope to see you next time.